Advanced Studio Classroom is on the air. This is your Advanced Class, your window on the world, and stay tuned today as we talk about the subject of multitasking. We're glad you're with us today, and if you plan to learn some good English today, maybe you should stop doing what you're doing and not multitask, and listen and open your magazine. What do you think of that, Linda? Well, my magazine is open. Yes, mm -hmm. and another Mine Linda. Mine is two. Two Lindas and Doris were here, but you know, we do have to multitask sometime, and that's what we're going to talk about today. I think that'll be a very interesting subject. Yeah, this is quite different from the last two days. We we're on our lifestyle article in Advance Magazine, and we've talked about inspiration from Dorothy Joy, who runs at the age of, well, walks quickly in marathons at the age of 90, to drinking tea and calming down. And now we're going to drink coffee and multitask. That's right. <laughs> The calming part is over. It's time to get around <laughs> to whether we should work harder or do more things at the same time. What does multitasking actually mean? Linda? It means to do more than one thing at a time. So you're doing more than one task at okay. a time. Well, what do they say about multitasking? If you look at page 12 here, it tells us, what does they say about this multitasking? Well, you know, we used to... Um laud it, which meant meant we used to like think Praise. it was Yay, great, it's good. Mm -hmm. right? But now they're saying that probably isn't the best thing to be doing because read, it read what it says there. It says one thing at a time. Oh, okay, uh, one thing at a time. Multitasking might seem more productive, but experts warn it could have negative health consequences. Wow. Very interesting. Negative health means it might affect your health. Mm -hmm. That's kind of scary. That is, yeah, especially if, um, you know, you've been thinking that this has been something good to do. Yeah, I'm learning how to do yeah. it, you know, and you're, you're really happy about it. And then you say, uh-oh, uh -oh, might affect your health. Right. Gotta it might be, be a bad thing after uh -oh. all. I thought this was a very interesting article. So I, I really would encourage you, if you have your magazines, to find uh, to open to page 12 and, and read along with us and mark it and see what you think about it. And you can even write and tell us about it. Right. It's a serious warning. It is and see what of. you think. Let us know if you agree with this or not. Right. 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 Okay. So where are we going to start today then? Well, we're going to, in our left-hand column on page 12, we're going to read that first section. One thing at a time. Multitasking might seem more productive, but experts warn it could have negative health consequences. At home, at work, and even for leisure activities, technology has given us tools to increase productivity and efficiency. It also introduced more distractions than ever. Multitasking has been praised as a way to do more, but research has consistently shown that doing more than one thing at a time can hinder productivity. Some researchers say that while multitasking can be bad for our performance, it could also be bad for our brains. Cal Newport, associate professor at Georgetown University, says constantly bouncing from task to task deteriorates the muscle that allows one to focus. The more a person multitasks, the less comfortable they become in engaging in deep work for extended periods of time. For an effort to be considered deep work and for it to reap the rewards depth can offer, there can be no distractions, Newport says. Well, our article starts out basically on all fronts, you know, home, work, and even at play. We have a lot of ways to uh, increase our productivity, what we do, and also how efficient we are in our work or whatever we're working at. But it also said, the article also says that because of this 
um, our new technology. We also have more distractions than ever. And you know, that is really, if you're distracted, it means something takes your attention away from what you're doing, focused Mm -hmm. on, right? Right. So if you go somewhere and you see people are talking and then their phone rings, or buzzes or gives them a notification, if you sit in a restaurant and watch, they will automatically look at their Mm -hmm. phone. At least look at it, if not pick it up. Well, talking about distractions, one of the worst ones is that when people are driving the car and they have a distraction, Mm -hmm. they often have an accident. Right. And distractions can be very dangerous. Right. Because it takes their attention away from what they're supposed to be doing is focusing on the road. But that's this is that's not really multitasking no. because you're not really you're just checking something. But it's the beginning of it, mm-hmm. you know, and it shows you how distracted we become. The technology has introduced a lot of these kind of distractions in our into our lives. Well, right. in fact, it says that multitasking has been praised as a way. Let's do more. Now we can do so many things at the same time. Isn't that great? So it's been praised for that, hasn't mm-hmm. it? But actually, we see that it might hinder or can hinder productivity. And hinder here just means what to, does it mean to hinder something? hold back or decrease the amount of producti- mm-hmm. productivity. What I think is interesting is, is it says here that research has consistently, consistently shown this to be true. So mm-hmm. that means that they've tested this over and over. I mean, they've done research on this over and over, and every time they come up with the same conclusion. So you might not do better, better performance. And the next part is, I think, is the dangerous part. It could be bad for your brains. We need to protect our brains. We need all our brain cells, don't we? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I need a few more. (laughs) We need them all. Don't burn out your brain cells, right? Yes. We talk about brain cells, and they're very important. Right. So we usually talk about, you know, how great it, I mean, that person is such a multitasker, can be working on several things at once. But we've always thought that it's really great. And we've kind of even envied that kind mm-hmm. of person. But we, c- we need to see that maybe that's not so great. And we need to protect ourselves. Why because did they if, say that? Well, if you work in an office, we're often interrupted by things, you yes. know. And sometimes we're asked to work on or, or think about a few mm-hmm. things at a time. Mm-hmm. Or work we on several projects at a time. Yes. Mm-hmm. So we see we have this associate professor, Cal Newport, from Georgetown University, and that he is in um, Washington, D.C. I mean, Georgetown University is in Washington, D.C. So what they have shown is, I like this, constantly bouncing from task to task. So that means you go from task A to task B to task C, back to task A, maybe back to task C, maybe task back to task B. That is very hard to say. <laughs> you're so you're trying to... to get you <laughs> <laughs> so if we're working on three different things at the same time, we're going back and forth uh, between them, then it deteriorates muscle that allows us to focus. That is shocking to me. I, I underlined that part because I didn't realize so much about the muscle. You know, we think about the brain cells, mm-hmm. but there is something to do here with the muscles in your brain. And if they deteriorate, deteriorate is always bad, isn't it? Right. It's breaking down that muscle in your brain. And so we want to have all keep all the muscle. Right. We, we want to build up your brain, brain power. Yeah. Right. Have you ever thought that we've had a muscle that helps us focus? I know. I never thought. I, never thought thought I know that. some people don't seem to have that muscle. <laughs> How do you develop that focusing muscle, you know? <laughs> it's, it's pretty important, though, isn't it? Right. Focus. Some people just can't seem to focus. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's they've critical. deteriorated theirs by too much multitasking. Possibly. That be? Yeah. <laughs> so we shouldn't encourage them to multitask <laughs> if they already well, have problems focusing. Right. I know. And actually, that's what, really, it's so interesting because that is what the next sentence says. The more a person multitasks, the less comfortable that person becomes in engaging in deep work for extended periods of time. And if you mm-hmm. think about it, you know, we talk about this with kids, mm-hmm. that they have a hard time in school paying attention. That's true. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, multitasking means different things at different levels of our lives. Right. You know? So if a child is constantly 
bouncing around from doing all these different things, watching TV shows. You know, they're constantly changing topics on a lot of cartoons or educational shows. They're not able to, their muscle is not able to develop to help That's them true. concentrate for a no long time. No wonder kids time. can't concentrate in school. Yeah. Well, well I mean, well, besides it just makes all the you distractions. start thinking about it, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah because there are a lot of distractions and your mind is going here, going there, going somewhere else. They didn't used to have that many else. distractions, right? No. Right. So it's very, I think it's something we need to really take seriously. And I think we need to, uh, they define deep work here. That's kind of a new term, I think, for people. Well, what is deep work? For those of you that are doing editing, the magazines and things, that's kind of deep work. You have to concentrate, don't you? Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of jobs that do take that. People working in computer programs and what kind of things take deep work? It's not like being a waitress in a restaurant. Well, no, it, it requires a lot of, I think, concentration Creative. is what they're talking about. Uh-huh. The ability to concentrate and to think about something and really to analyze it. And for the key is for extended periods of time. Right. So I think that um, at the very bottom of the page, we have a box here. Mm-hmm. It's called the, I don't know how you say this, Pomodoro technique. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you feel, uh, to me, it's very helpful if you feel like maybe you're losing your concentration. This mm-hmm. is quite interesting. So should we take a look at this, what it says okay. here? It's uh, in the very bottom of page 12. Right at the bottom of page 12. And it says that many productivity experts use this method, technique. It calls for 25-minute sessions of intense, distraction-free work. So I was just thinking, how many uh, among the three of us do we have 25 minutes of distraction-free work ever? At home, uh, nice. without a phone call, without a message popping up, right. without somebody <laughs> walking by saying something yeah. to you, phone ringing. It's right. it's hard to do. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, really, that's quite a long to us. Really, that's quite a long time now. Yeah, you know, twenty five mm-hmm. minute free. So they need a, an intense distraction free work for twenty five minutes after midnight. After midnight, <laughs> you get a five minute break after this, and mm-hmm. it says also that you set a most important task and schedule work days and weeks in advance so that that will help you reduce the compulsion to multitask. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the compulsion means the feeling that you should do it. I better do this. And you feel kind of that you have to do it. Mm-hmm. But you want to reduce that feeling. And so say, I don't have to. Right. Tell you yourself, know, we, I we, don't have to. We have this, um, actually it was the title of a book, uh, the, the something of the urgency, right? Tyranny of the urgency. Oh, yeah, the tyranny. Yeah. So what what does that mean? Um, so basically it's talking about how our lives are ruled by the things that are um, just most urgent. Mm-hmm. That's what we tend to. Like if something, you have an emergency, you're, of course you're going to deal with that first. Um, so... If we plan, you know, like it says here, um, if we schedule our work days and plan in advance, then that reduces that urge, the tyranny, the tyranny of the urgency. Yeah. Right. It also Tyranium made. Urgency, sorry. <laughs> it also made me realize that you know we've been I've been reading some articles that say the most successful business people don't read their emails or answer their phones for the first two hours after they get to work. Mm-hmm. And I think that en- enables them to get away from the tyranny of the urgency because when we read something, we think, I've got to answer this right away or I've got to yeah. do this. Yeah. Yeah, but it allows pro- them pros to... And cons, because sometimes I think if I just look at the emails because there's something in there that I have to take care of, and if I try to... Do something first, and then I say, I wish I'd read that first if I'd known. So I like to get the information, but I don't think I have to do something about it. But sometimes right. I think it's nice to know because then otherwise you'd be doing something and, and you find out you don't have to do it even. Well, sometimes they also, yeah. well, they, I think they feel like it's too distracting. Yeah. So if you're trying to concentrate on, on it, something that you're trying to finish right. maybe or to start or to plan. Pl- then, plan through them is okay, but don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think it all kind of fits together with this. Sure. It's very, very interesting. But I think the most important thing from this first section is we need to be careful about our brain muscle. We need to be careful about our, our activities uh, deteriorating that muscle because it's going to affect us in the long run. Yes, exactly. That's true. Okay. Well, it's very important to eliminate or get rid of as many distractions as we can.
Sometimes the phone rings. Sometimes you turn your phone off and you forget to turn it on. That's bad, too. <laughs> so you have to kind of figure out a way to do that. But I think the idea is, if, like, let's say you do just take a quick look at your your emails or your messages, and, and maybe you were planning to prepare a schedule for somebody, and then you find out that person isn't coming. So at least I know I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to work on it right then. So I kind of like to look at mine. doesn't mean you have to do something about it. But just to discipline yourself. So right. I'm going to look at it, but I'll do it later. Mm -hmm. I do that sometimes. Do you ever do that? Yeah, I don't do what I just said. I said I wished I <laughs> <laughs> No, but I do. Th it's okay to look at it, but it does but not mean I you think, have to do it. Right no, then. but I think, but you know, if you, I think it's still distracting to our minds. Mm. That's all I'm saying. Right. You know, so I think that we do feel like we have to do it, and it is helpful. But it also has made me think about wh how it affects me. Yeah, well, it's a very good thing to, to remind us. Don't you and think? I also mm -hmm. think that you need to know yourself and know when you're most productive. So for me, I know that it's morning, mm -hmm. you know. So if I can do a lot of the, as they call it, deep work here, you know, in the morning before I take care of all this. For all the people come All these little things, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Not little things, but, you know, all right. a wide variety of things, then it's better quality. Before you stop and have your cup of tea. Right. No, I can I can drink and work. That's not multitasking. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, let's read the second one here. Let's read about the importance of eliminating distractions. The importance of eliminating distractions. Newport says when a person is multitasking, they are diverting attention from one part of the brain to the other. This not only reduces attention on the other task, but reduces the bandwidth of the brain needed to move attention back and forth. To produce at your peak level, you need to work for extended periods with full concentration on a single task, free from distraction, Newport says. Okay, so we do want to eliminate, which means to get rid of, things that take our attention away from what we're doing. So that's the importance here of eliminating these distractions. So Linda, when you think about this, uh, when you divert your attention from something, what does that mean to divert it? You're taking away um, your attention from something and giving it to something else. You notice here they talk about it reduces the the bandwidth of the brain. I never think about the brain as having bandwidth. I think, of, you know, computers, how much they right. can do. But that's kind of an interesting phrase there, isn't it? Right. And that just means it's talking about the capacity of your brain to change back and forth and then to concentrate. You know, really, it's kind of shocking. It is, right. We don't think about it that way. You know, if we reduce the bandwidth of our, of our computer, we are in big trouble. Right. Mm -hmm. It means it's well, yeah. We all want to have you know our highest level, and, and so we have to work longer times at full concentration on one thing instead of just a few minutes and then come back to it. Do you ever forget what you just did if you you go away from it for a minute? Do you? Oh yeah, forget? all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see. Where was I here? You know? <laughs> no. Yeah, and it takes you like, I mean, for me, it takes me like five minutes to like... Find out where were you. And hopefully yeah. I'm in the right place again. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. that's true. So there's a lot of uh, good advice and good knowledge, I think, in this section right here. That's a very important part. Yeah. I think if you sit in, like, you sit in kind of a high traffic mm -hmm. area, you know, and if you do, you need to have something that can keep you from being distracted by everything happening around you. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe have some earphones, you know, to, yeah, to full block concentration, out the right. yeah. Yeah. If you stop and listen to all the conversations around you, you won't get your job done, right? Exactly. Right. But I think we, we all want to produce well, and we can't do as good a job if we have too many things going on because we might forget something or leave something out. It could be very important, mm -hmm. you know. And there's actually been researcher reports um, that say multitasking is a myth, that we actually have to stop and do one thing at a time. So we're not doing it simultaneously. Right. We're actually still doing it one at a time. We think we're doing two or three things, right. but in a way, it's better just to get one done than mm -hmm. do the other one. Because you're, you're, that's what you're doing anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So right. instead of having to refocus, you know, because it takes time, and then also you might be doing bad things to your brain. Yeah. <laughs> 
It's now that's just very important. All at yes. once. Right. But, you know, it is interesting how, as a culture, we have, like, thought it's great that people multitask. So I think we we really need to, like, re-educate ourselves mm-hmm. and really find that's out true. really what we're talking about. So it, you can read this for yourself and pass it on to your friends and and uh, your kids in school that are doing it. And, and make, it's a very useful article because we want to take care of our brains. And, you know, this can have a physical impact on the brain, not just your job, but it, it, it actually affects your brain. And we need to protect our brain. That's why we wear helmets when you go bicycling and motorcycles. Mm-hmm. You want to protect your brain. Exactly. We do everything we can to protect it from getting hit from the outside, but we have to protect it from getting hit from the inside, don't exactly. we? Exactly. So let's read that second column, the last column here. A Physical Impact on the Brain One study discovered that people who multitask can actually experience a temporary drop in their IQ while doing so. Another study found that simultaneously using multiple devices could actually be changing the structures of our brains. Researchers looked at the brain structures of 75 adults and found that people who used a higher number of media devices concurrently had smaller gray matter density. Media multitasking is becoming more prevalent in our lives today, and there is increasing concern about its impacts on our cognition and social-emotional well-being, says study author Kep Kilo. So we are taking a look here at the physical impact on the brain, and we see that, once again, you're going to hear me say this over and over again, I'm kind of shocked at the, at the um, conclusions here, that people who multitask experience a temporary drop in their IQ while mm. they are multitasking, That's and our terrible. IQ means intelligence quota. Mm. Don't, right. don't you hate to drop your IQ? I need to build mine up. No yeah, I don't think might... anybody wants a lower <laughs> IQ. That really is Does that shocking. Mean we, find, we, we sound stupid. <laughs> yeah, right. So, you know, actually there's a lot of physical impact. I mean, that's what this says, a physical impact on the brain. A lot more than we think that there is. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, according to their study, we see it might be due to using multiple devices those so what were these kind of devices? What phones, are we talking about? Phones, iPads, tablets, um, yeah, uh, smartwatches. Smartwatches, what else? All kinds computers. of things. Computers. Right. Yeah. Well, it says here they're changing the structures of our brains. And mm-hmm. I was just looking at an article that said definitely, you know, when my kids were growing up, they're in their mid-30s now, when we would go out or to entertain them, I always like carried little toys or little Mm -hmm. cars or something that they had something to do. I don't see anybody, I'm not saying this is good or bad, but I'm, actually I am. (laughs) I don't see anybody doing that now. You know, when my kids were little, we would, everybody Mm -hmm. gave them a little toy toy. to play with. Or coloring books. Right, coloring books. But now, automatically, you see somebody hand their child Mm -hmm. and their toddler an iPhone or a phone uh, to watch a movie or to play a game on. And the studies coming out are really, really bad Mm -hmm. for children. Mm-hmm. Right, they aren't able their to Their mind focus. has jumped to too yeah. many things, right. Well, and it's it, it's very, very bad on their brain. I mean, if you look at what it's doing to an already developed brain, think about the impact it's having on a brain that's not developed yet or in the stages of development. Exactly. Well, and not only that, they don't notice anything about what's going on. They don't see the birds. They mm-hmm. don't see the flowers. I mean, they just see the device, so they're they're missing out on a lot, too. right. But mm-hmm. here it says it's changing the structures of our brain. Mm-hmm. If it's changing the structure of our brain as adults, what is it doing to children? That's true. But I, I thought this was fascinating that they're talking about um, that, you know, in a brain that's already developed, we already talked about the deterioration of the uh, bandwidth, right, of, yes. of our muscle in our brain. Mm-hmm. So now it's changing that structure even more. What do you think, Linda? Um, well, yeah, I find it fascinating, but also scary. Mm-hmm. Like, scary, right. <laughs> um, to it's think. a warning, isn't it? It is. And 
You know, here it says people who used a higher number of media devices concurrently, which means at the same time, had smaller gray matter density. And, and we always talk about our gray matter density. Well, you don't have much gray matter density. <laughs> you don't know very much, you know. Right, and that's the part, in, uh, the nerve tissue in our brain, um, you know, that controls sensory perception, like seeing and hearing, memory, emotion, speech, mm-hmm. decision making, and Self control. So those are all very important things. And so, if you, the the gray matter or that part in your brain is smaller, then you have less capacity for these things. So this article is supposed to be like a serious warning, and this last paragraph certainly does have the serious warning. It says, "Media multitasking is becoming more prevalent, which means more common. Mm-hmm. Everybody's doing it nowadays, and increasing concern about the way." It affects our cognition. Now, what is our cognition? The way we think. The way we think and our social, emotional well-being. Wow. The, uh, the way that we can even relate to other people. Or e- it even affects your personality. Right. Well, that's what Linda was just saying about how it affects the gray matter. You know, if you looked at all the areas she mentioned, it really encompasses all of this. Our social, uh, the way we act socially, emotionally, the decisions that we make, everything. It is, I think we really do need to look at this seriously and take it into really deep into our hearts and minds and think about what we're doing. But now that we've read this, we have been well warned and we can do something about it. We can do something ourselves. We can pass it on to our friends Mm -hmm. and be careful with your friends and your family and your relatives. Tell them that multitasking is not something that they should be doing. Concentrate and don't let too many things distract you. So thanks for being with us as we've studied these different lessons of lifestyle the last few days. And we hope that your lifestyle will be improved as you study with us. Write to us. Let us know your opinion on these things. And thanks for being our friends for life. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.